for uh, today's topic, we will see uh, how to create data model, the report, and the parameter and the bursting. So for uh, infusion to create a report, let's go to the instance. So we'll go to this navigation bar. And under tools, we can see this option report and analytics. We'll go over here. After coming to this page, we need to click on Browse Catalog. So this is our interface of report and analytics. So as you can see over here, there is two options. One is my folders and one is shared folders. So shared folders is the one is the custom one where you can keep your report where it uh, which it will be visible for everyone. So for all the global user, like if uh, if I am if the instance is from my name, I can see the report. If instance is from some other person name, they can also see the report if you give them a report path. And in my folders is our local folder. You can say where we keep our own report for testing purpose. Once we verify, yeah, the report is working fine. Then we go for the shared folders and keep our report in custom. So under if I go over here, this is a demo instance. So if I show it, you can see over here custom. So basically all our report. Stays in custom in custom. You can see you can, uh, you can show somebody. Can. In custom folder, as you can see, is a financial. Then you can see the receivables. Procurement module you can see. So according to our path, the requirement, we keep the report in that particular area. So this is a custom one. And if I come down, if I minimize this custom. And outside also you can see this financial folder, this uh, then procurement folder. Recruiting then supply chain management. So these are all the uh, seeded one is the uh, standard report which we say from the technical side. One is standard report, one is custom report. Custom report is that which we create of our own according to our requirement customization and the standard report is that which already Oracle has provided us. So those report you can find it over here, not in the custom folder. In custom folder, the custom report stays in outside all the uh, for report which Oracle has given us. So, so, uh, so like, only uh, sorry, Puja, just one yeah. minute. In the custom folders, whatever the report which we create, we we put it there. All Correct. other folders are seeded folders in which we will. Find the reports which is out of the box report. Yeah, which is this standard report which already Oracle is using the standard report. Correct. This is what out of the box. Yeah. So uh, when we create our report, it's not that we only can use the custom report. We can also use the standard because sometimes requirement comes that we have to do some uh, edit in our standard report. So for that, I will show you uh, afterwards how to do that. And let me first uh, complete how we can do for the custom ones and normal report how we can create. My folder is nothing but it's a local one where we keep once we verify from our own side, then we put it in this particular folder. And so this is I... movement of movement of folder from one to another, like hmm. my folder to share folder. It is just drag and drop, no, nothing uh, else, right? Uh, no, no. If suppose if uh, now um, if uh, something is there in my my folders, one thing you can do because this is uh, my own user. Suppose this is one instance, correct? So from this one instance, if I if some report is in my folder and I want to move in my shared folders, then what I can do basically, I can I will just click on more and there will some copy option will be there. So we have to just click on copy of that particular data model and report. And or if you come down over here in tabs, you can see after when we click copy, the paste option automatically pops up over here. And you have to go to that existing path where you want to keep and you have to come down and click on the paste option. Automatically it get paste. There is no drag and drop option over here. 
You have to okay. copy it and you have to paste it. And if we go for the another instance, suppose uh, I am, uh, this is my user. Suppose I have to move the reports in the Prashant Sales user. So what I need to do at that time, uh, which we call as a uh, technical report migration, that time we use as archive and unarchive. I can show you once after if we create one report, I can show you. So uh, let's start from creating a non basic report, how we go. So you can see over here, create option. And over here, you can see data, uh, data model, right? So let's click on this data model. This is same for all report. When we create a report from a scratch, this is the process for every report. You have to go and create and you have to go for data model. Uh, when we are saying that when we are creating a report, so we are saying that when we are creating a BI report. So we have different types of report as OTBI and BI. So this is the process which Pooja is demonstrating is for BI reports. Yeah, there is one BIP report and there is an OTBI report. For OTBI report, we doesn't need any query that works for a subject area. That's a drag and drop option. Basically, OTBI report is used for a dashboard purposes. And almost in the most of the time, we use the BIP report for where we have to create our own query and according to the requirement. So uh, this is the data model. Under data model, we are having data sets. So you can see after a uh, plus sign, there's a create option SQL query. I will click on this option. The name means any name which, which you want to provide to your data sets name. OK, this is this will be my data set name. So suppose I'm giving over here test. And data source means which DB I want to use. I want to use the FSCM DB supply chain management and type of SQL is the standard SQL. OK, now before coming to query, how to write a query in uh, Fusion? Let me go to Google. So first comes in our mind that tables we are there, right? So how to search for a table in Fusion? Type over here Oracle documentation. Go for this first link. Because as in Oracle Fusion, we know there is we can only use a select uh, query option like in EBS. Uh, as much I know, you can do many kind of customization. You can delete, you can drop, you can do anything. But in uh, Fusion, we can only use a select statement. So as Oracle has already uh, built this, uh, uh, Oracle has already given a tables. So we cannot create our own tables. We have to go for all those table in only. We can change our condition according to requirement but we cannot create our own tables that is already created by Fusion. So after go to Oracle documentation, click on this Fusion application suit. OK, so here you can see supply chain management. You can see HCM, you can see ERP. So suppose you're working on supply chain management and we want a procurement tables. So we have to click on procurement. If you want an inventory management table, go for that. If you want order management tables, what are the there you can see. So according to that, we'll go. Suppose let's click on procurement. I will click on all books option. And just drag and come down. And you can see tables and views for procurement. Click on this. So as you can see, we're purchasing. Purchasing means we all know that is a PO. So click on these tables. Yeah. So you can see all the tables over here, right? So according to PO tables, we have three which we call as a master table. That is PO header all, PO line all, and PO distribution all. So let me show you one table how it comes. Uh, so tell me one more thing, Pooja. Uh, uh, yeah. These are the tables, but what table can uh, which table contains what? That yeah, that, that is the only uh, documentation that uh, you, uh, you, you can see it over here. Uh, let me open one table. All the documentation you will and, get. How, and, uh, what is the. And we used to yeah. have, uh, uh, you know, uh, the uh, diagram as well, which which you is connected to what? Uh, you're talking about ETRM. So yeah, it's like TRM only. Yeah, TRM. So here we have only this part, but here we have every column have the uh, what is the value field and description. So I understood that you are talking about that 
uh, association structure that which table contain which child table yeah foreign so, key yeah so foreign key foreign key yes so this detail under these detail only nothing as specific somewhere mentioned Uh, here you can okay. see what's the primary key. Okay, uh, if, over here you can see primary key. So it's because sometimes in Oracle documentation we can see there is one primary key, but when we run our query or we search for a Google, uh, so we can see some other also primary key. So it's not that all the primary key they have mentioned over here, but basic at least standard one they have mentioned over here at least. So there is one primary key they have mentioned and if we come down, you can see all the columns exist on that particular table. What is the data type? What is the comment means? What basically this column is giving you the information? Suppose a header ID is giving you a document header unique identifier. So we can understand by seeing which particular column is giving. Because sometimes what happens in front end, the column name is different, but in back end, the column name is different. So it's not able to understand exactly that is the only one which we want or not. So we can read this comment and we can understand, okay, this column is giving us that particular information only. So it helps us on that thing. And if you come down over here, you can see the foreign keys all, okay? The foreign keys of the which you are asking right now, the foreign keys. We get a basic list. At least they provide us basic list. We have to now check in query whether it is after adding join working or not. But basic list they provide us what is the primary key, the foreign key, and the columns and their description. So this is the documentation. Do, do we have uh, data flow diagram somewhere? It, it would um, be, I believe. Data flow diagram, uh, I don't think it is there. Just go above, go, go above. Achha, let, okay, okay. On the on the left hand side. Achha, left hand side, yeah. Go above. Okay. Yeah. Overview, purchasing tables, view action history. What? Okay. Um, just go below. This is just table names and. Yeah, is this there? is the table names, and below you can see the view tables name. Which we have after all table name underscore V or the view tables. And just in the last, have they not given anything? Okay, understood the views and go below. The last, they yeah. should have given somewhere something. Oh, they have not given. Okay, fine. So, self service procurement, we can go for the if we want a requisition table that is called as an SSP. I'll start with POR. So in every can, you can, can, see, can you go can you go to any of the view please? Any of the view table, yeah, sure. Suppose this is view table one. Yeah. Here it will be giving view definition, I guess. Actually, in view uh, table, the view uh, they doesn't give any kind of comments or anything. They just mention the column names and nothing else they provide for view tables. If you if you can see. Only the columns name you can see. No, if you see, they have given the view definition. If you uh, query some uh, complex view now, because this is a, a simple view, basically. If you go for some complex view like VL1, you will see the complete query. Go to PO line types VL. It will have multiple joins. VL, VL. Yeah. Underscore VL. Yeah, yeah, this is VL. This one. Yeah, now if you go down, there will be some joins in this table with the TL table. See, here there is a join, right? It's a join, sir. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so basically, this gives you the view definition actually. We, yes. This should be given in for everything, every other view, isn't it? This is a simple view, yeah. it seems. No, it is a complex view. Basically, it has joins. But previously, when she queried PO lines V, it was a simple view. It was just uh, one base table, PO lines all. That's it. Here, it is okay. having join. Okay, got it. So views are actually not only one or two tables. Sometimes it is for multiple tables, tables. also. So 
Could just, just see any other VL also in all the VLs, this kind of a definition they have given. Yeah, in all the VL, you will have a TL table. Job. That trans, you can see. Translation. So, query. so they have given the query, right? So that is fine, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So this is how we, uh, we got the understanding of ETRM, which is very, very important for anyone to write the query or understand the structure. If we could have this uh, data flow diagram also, like hope you guys are understanding what I'm talking about, then uh, we would be able to understand which is connected to which table and uh, what is the foreign key and all that. But yeah, we can read it through this as well. I don't think that, yeah, that would have changed there. much. Huh? Yeah, at least at least sir whatever they have brought in from e business that would have, that will not change but as uh, prashant told in our first conversation that uh, they brought uh, hcm from uh, people soft right so people soft will have their own tables right correct correct in hcm area this is this is different yeah because yeah, because PO headers or lines are these tables we can recognize easily because these are from e-business only. But can you can you go to uh, HCM tables Actually, because they, they won't be starting with HR. Yeah, yeah. Because if it is from uh, uh, PeopleSoft, their naming convention, it will not be same like uh, what we have in, yeah, go to human resource. No, naming convention is like mm -hmm. our EBS. Mm -hmm. uh, what I was saying, HCM concept, how this application will work has been derived from our PeopleSoft. Okay, but the tables and views, they are still using, if you go to uh, top, uh, no, go, go, go for the top. Okay. Uh, basic information. HCM tables and views. Go to yeah, first, yeah. SCM SCM tables. Tables. yeah. Sorry. It's an overview will be there. Tables. Uh, Suppose one table I can show you. Just search for core HR something if you get that. Scroll down. Not the benefits. No, naming has been changed, I think. Yeah. So scroll down. Scroll down. Yeah, HRD has come. Now, if you see, go to compensation. Global, global HR. Tables. Which one I should go? Compensation yeah. or global? Global HR tables. Click no. on this. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Naming has also been Name changed. Name has changed. Yeah. That is all. <laughs> because I remember you told on the first day, right? The yes. SCM has Name from, from PeopleSoft. PeopleSoft. <laughs> yeah. So best thing for e-business guy is to focus on finance module only because that we, that is no Oracle application only. Finance and uh, supply chain, both. Okay, supply chain also from uh, e-business only. Supply chain conceptually is from uh, your GD Edward, uh, but it's okay. mainly based on your EBS. Okay. So basically, here we don't have any facility of like examine and see the last query, right? We have to depend on this TRM only. Uh, because we don't have forms concept, we have these pages which are EDF pages. So that is different way to obtain that part as you would have worked on OAF and we were looking into the uh, VO, CO, so yeah. that was different way. So here also it's a SaaS. You don't have any option to get detail of that page until unless you have a pass license. So then only you can okay. get background of that uh, page. Yeah. So, uh, please continue, Pooja. Let's try to finish the topic on time. OK, OK, fine. So this is the way we can see how tables, which tables we need to take for PO, requisition, supply chain, other all modules. So this is the 
the path we have to come and see. Otherwise, it's not that always we need to come in this official page. If you go on Google and search over there also, they sometimes we get our docs link and you can come to direct on that path. It's possible. No issue. Okay. So let's can you see. please share this link, this uh, TRM link? Yeah, sure. I, after the session, I will share in chat. Okay. Yeah. So suppose you can. I have already uh, made one query for you all. Small query. Suppose this is a PO query. So let me. Yeah, sure. uh, suppose uh, we are having this table. So normally, in how we SQL write. So this is the table, and this is the allies name which we wants to give because it is easy for us if we provide an allies name because sometimes repeat columns are there in some tables. So if we give an allies and that column name, it will be easy for us. And where is equal to one to one for the uh, query to get to run it a little fast for the. Optimization and this is the join as you can see. Suppose we are taken as header lines and distribution tables. So header ID has been joined with the line. So these are the basic joins which we provide. And uh, suppose we uh, segment one, you can see. So segment one is nothing but a PO number. In uh, backend, they have said as a segment one, but it is a PO number. So if I run this query. I will just paste this query over here and just click on OK. So you can see all the tables. We will click on now data to view our data. OK, and over here you can see rows five rows five means we can see only five results, five outcome. And we have a limited 200 over here because in data sets over here we can see 200. It's not that 200 POs are only present in instance. It can be more. So once we create a report, all the POs, if it is 100, 200, 5000, all the POs will come. But over here, we our limit is to see till 200 rows. So as you can see, all the data have came up. Now suppose we have to create a report with this. So let's create a report with this example only. Uh, after doing after before creating a report, we have to save this data model. OK, so I will just click on the save button. Yeah, so now you can see I will save this particular data model in my folder only. OK, so if I want, I can create a folder also from here also. OK, suppose I want to create a folder. Uh, inside that I want to keep this data model so we can do that also. Basically, we do that only in uh, real time scenario. Suppose I'm creating with my name Pooja. And see automatically I goes my folder slash Pooja. Inside this, I will save my data model. Suppose my data, I'm creating a report of PO. So suppose PO underscore DM. It's there is no fixed naming convention, but we give underscore DM. That's for our basic understanding that this, this will be a data model. Description is not mandatory to give. We can click on OK. So you can see it, it got saved. Now to create a report, we have first to click on save as sample data. Then we'll go for create report. So there is a uh, many way to create a report in a uh, VIP. So uh, let, let it come. Yeah, so this particular page you can see this. Uh, we go for this when we want to create a wizard method report, but basically we don't create a wizard method report. With a uh, wizard method report is something uh, like uh, nothing we have to do automatically. Got understand that for which particular data model we want to create a report. We just need to drag and drop over there for any small kind of report or five to three columns are there just to see the output what it is coming. So we can go for that. Basically, we don't do for that thing. We click on cancel over here. We'll click on OK then and we'll create a 
report of suppose rtf excel according to the requirement so before creating the report we need to first link the data model for which data model we want to create a report so we'll go on search over here and we have to always see the path you are there in the correct path or not so i have saved my report in this particular path podm i will select this and i will click on okay <coughs> yeah so now as i am creating a new report so i will create on generate if i am having some existing report which i want to upload so that time i click i go for upload option okay so sub, now we are creating a new report so we'll go for generate option and here we'll give a template name suppose a po report i'm giving as my template name i'll click on generate and you can see automatically our report got generated this is a by default format when oracle okay now let's first do one thing let's first save this report okay from here we have to because until and unless you save the report you cannot view a report if i click on view a report it will give me an error that you have to save the report then you can view so i will just click on save button yeah so you can see a uh, puja uh, inside that only i want to save my report also so to understand that this is a report so i will give po underscore report so that for my understanding i can understand according to our understanding we have to give the naming convention and click on okay and my report got saved so let's first view this report how basically the by default report format come it will take some time because as we have not hard coded any po number you have just uh, ran the report for all pos this will fetch big data huh yeah this will fetch a big data so sometimes we get give a join for bu suppose we want a us business unit one pos so according to the query it will fetch the output uh is it slow because of big data that it is fetching or it may be some issue of system uh no it is a big data fetching we are not having any filter or anything for all pos it will give the result so let's put take... the filter let's put the filter cancel and put the filter yeah let's uh, do some edit in our yeah, query I... then we can oh, sorry see as you can see uh, report got more completed uh, okay it will take some time as we are having lots of data it will take some few minutes so as you can see this is a basic uh, template design which oracle provides us okay now suppose uh, let me just scroll you can export me... yeah yeah we can export. we can have export in different formats so html pdf rtf excel powerpoint these are the all export format we are having so we can go for this option also now just let me show the setup so let's come out it will get hanged because lots of data is there and uh, it will come up from this <coughs> Maybe cancel it and run it with the smaller numbers, and then show. Yeah, yeah, that will be better. Yeah. 
So you can see I am in my path and you can see this data model and report. Report this looks like this and DM looks like this. OK, now suppose let's do some editation edit in our query. Suppose let's go edit. So if if you save once the report, if you go for any more edit, you have to click on that edit. Select this, click on this pencil and you can edit your query. So suppose let's do one thing because we also don't know what POs are existing. So let's suppose run for five rows and pick some PO number from there and we can hard code that. So according to that small query will come. So suppose we are having this PO number. So let's yeah. hard code this. Sorry. Just add Sorry. one more condition. Yeah, just add one more condition. And are, row num is less than Achha, you, you, yeah. Okay, you want me to do that? Okay. Mm -hmm. we, we are all from Oracle e background. Okay, so we know uh, how to and restrict row num the number of rows. It will bring now only 10. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Same thing. You can just save this data model. And you can just come outside. And you can just click on this run button because already our report is linked with our data model. So I'll click on open. And report got completed. So this has the five rows we got it. Now let me complete how to add one parameter over here, then we can go for how to edit a report. So for this, we are having this parameter option over here. So we'll click on this. First, I need to add a parameter logic in my query. So for that, I will write it over here. Suppose I want my parameter for a PO number. OK, so let me add. Let me now comment this one. Check the allies name which I have given. As you can see, I've added one simple parameter. So I need to click on this checkbox. I will click on OK. So automatically the parameter this came up. This name, anything you can change this name also. Let me keep it as uh, suppose PO. Okay. This is the data type which we want to uh, pick it up for this particular PO num. So we want a string value only. Okay. Parameter type text means uh, we have to. Uh, memorize means we have to hard code our number over there will not get in get in list of values. If we go for menu, that means we have to give this list of values that is LOV that will get some drop down and according to that we can just search for our PO number. And if we want to keep our parameter as a mandatory, we can click on this checkbox. This row replacement is suppose we are having 10 parameters. So we want this five parameters should be in the first row. Other five parameters should be in the second row. This is a segregation how you want to keep your parameter according to the row replacement. This reorder is nothing but suppose we have two parameters. This is why we have we need to do. So suppose let's go for menu only suppose. OK. And over here you can see the display uh, level means and when when we will is somebody saying something? Yeah, what is uh, a row placement? I didn't get. OK, a row placement. That is when you are having multiple parameters, you will you can shift parameter up or down. Yeah. 
ओके मैं सर्स सपोज लेट लेट मी सपोज ए ए बी सो दिस इज द टू पैरामीटर्स यू वांट टू कीप इन फर्स्ट रो यू वांट द थर्ड पैरामीटर शुड बी इन द सेकंड रो सो दैट इज द रो रिप्लेसमेंट अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट यू कैन डू इफ यू हैविंग मल्टीपल पैरामीटर्स टू अरेंज इट and for display label is uh, nothing but a display uh, name which we want to give when we'll run uh, what our parameter will show suppose let me give it as po number okay now list of values nothing will come because i have not added any query over there so as i have selected over here menu so it's mandatory to give me a list of values also for this particular parameter so i'll click on this list of values i will click on this create and i can give the name over here any name suppose l o v p o n u m and we obviously for uh, list uh, type we will give this uh, sql query fixed data okay. is uh, something suppose uh, we are having some view and we want to fix that data so that is the fixed one nobody will change that so we go for fixed one and in lov if you have some drop down if you want a menu list we go for sql query data source is the same we will choose the fsem data source and over here we'll write our query on the basis of which that lo will give us the data so we'll write suppose select we'll go for distinct because what happens uh, sometimes there are multiple po numbers are also there so in lov is better to always go for distinct so that in drop down we get one particular po number only no repetition So select distinct segment one means our PO number from PO header sort. Okay. So we'll just now click on the save button. Okay, sorry. This error came because we didn't choose anything. So automatically it will give us one only. If we have multiple list of values, the drop down will come according to your parameter name. We need to choose that which LOV we want to connect with our parameter. So I have chose it once. Now I'll go to LOV. We'll save this. Now it will get saved. Okay. So now let's go for this test one again. So automatically you can see the parameter came up, and we can see the drop down all the PO numbers. Okay. And over here, if we search, if you go, you can search with the PO number. You can go for starts with, contains, and ends with also. So suppose let's go for this. We don't know certain PO numbers. Let's suppose choose this one. Let's run this. So if this PO is having multiple lines, or uh, this PO is. You have not mapped this parameter in the data model in your query. Yeah, I have written uh, the query right, the PO number. I've okay. Given a... Okay. Yeah. You mentioned P number, and in label you mentioned PO number. So is it okay? Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't ma matters as as much I know. Po underscore num. This is display label. I think you need to have name, internal name. I think you are saying me this name should be there in our report. The query also po num. Ah uh, yeah. Correct. Okay. It does. Yeah. And understanding is also same. Sorry, minus. Okay. So for this PO number, if I go for two hundred. Yeah. 
So multiple lines are coming as you can see all the prices are different and this particular PO number is having so, so many lines over here. So this PO is having 46 lines, so 46 uh, data information we are getting for this particular PO. Now let's okay. save. This. Okay. So once you save this, uh, can you show that archive and archive step after this? Yeah. Just one more thing I want to show. Uh, in the report, if we add a parameter, like suppose, oh, let me. Yeah. Uh, just once I want to show. Suppose go for edit. Okay. Already our uh, data model is. We have changed something because of what uh, there are two, three times we have to link our data model. Suppose you are having 10 columns and you have saved your data model and you have ran your room. And now you have added some conditions or something. Then it's OK. Your report will run perfectly fine. But you have added some extra new columns and again you have to come over here and you have to link your data model one second. Otherwise, the report will not run. Okay, so suppose I have added a parameter with a var condition. Now you can see a viewer list option. So you can go for properties. So in properties, as you can see, this auto run option. This auto run is for parameter we use. Suppose it is enabled, that means when your report will run, it will not ask for you to choose anything. It will automatically get run. And if you close this, then you will uh, we have to put some values. Then we'll click on apply. Then our report will run. So according to the requirement, we uh, enable it and we disable it. If we when we go for parameter query. So, so if parameter is mandatory and if I make it as auto run, I think this auto run will be used for scheduled thing. I can schedule a process with some particular uh, parameter because parameter if I made parameter as mandatory. Yeah, so if I don't pass any parameter. Oh, sorry, continue. Yeah, so if I because my parameter is mandatory, and if even if I check that checkbox that is uh, auto run, and if I don't mm -hmm. pass any parameter, it will not run. Basically, yeah, because suppose we are having multiple thing. multiple parameters. Suppose we are having five parameters. From that, two is mandated. Mm -hmm. Suppose view is mandated, and other things are not mandated. Yeah. So at that yeah. time, we have to give our uh, results over there. Then we'll click on apply. Then the report will run. Yeah, so basically I, I will have to give those default um, values in that uh, when I will be defining those parameters for those mandatory Correct. parameters. Correct. And uh, another thing, uh, suppose uh, this is our by default data model, right? Uh, sorry, the template file which we got from the Oracle cell. If you click on the ed this edit option, this template will get downloaded. You can see this RTA because by default it gives us RTA template. We can go for the Excel template. We can go for XLS template. So these are the templates we go for. So suppose let me open this once. Because we doesn't go for this basic template, right? Suppose our requirement is to okay, let me click on enable editing. Yeah, suppose uh, our requirement is we have to put some head, uh, some BU name or some organization name that for which report we are going for. So any changes you want to require, you, you want to make it, do it over here, save it with another name or something else, save it. And then where I have shown you that upload option, then we have to go for that particular upload option or you can go for this add new layout. If we go for add new layout, you can see again this upload option. So click on this upload option, choose any layout name. We have to give it over here. The choose file means the edited uh, template file which we have done from our own um, own site. So we'll choose that particular template. We'll select it type. Is it the RTF template or it is an XLS template or whichever the type or e-text template. So we can choose according to that. Local means nothing but the language. We always go for um, English United States. So we'll choose that and we'll upload that. So 
in that in that way we can have two template one the basic one and one the edited one and if you want to delete the basic one we can do that also so the, the, uh, this is the way we upload our template when we edit from our own site and what sir was saying so the migrate it, 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 it gets downloaded in our local machine right uh, the rtf template which i have shown you the edit option yeah yeah, yeah, it gets uh, downloaded in local machine. If I go for downloads, okay. you can see this got downloaded. Okay. 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 Thank you. This is for the RTF template. Okay, we go for RT. XLS template. Excel template is totally different. We go for that. That template is totally different. We cannot do it from here. That will show you later. So, this is for RTF template. If you do and want to make any changes for RTF template, we need to do it like this. Uh, now let me show you how to do archive and unarchive. No, first from uh, that folder to another folder. Yeah, that because is archive the... and archive. This is migrating from one instance to another, like development yeah. instance to UAT, right? That is for archive and non-archive. Okay, just a minute. So suppose in shared folders, currently this is a demo instance. So this you can see custom, okay? Inside custom, let me create one folder of mine. Okay, I can do that also. In custom means in cu custom, you can create your own folder also, no issue. But that will be a global one. It will be visible for every user. So to create a folder, we need come over here and we go for folder like this and we create a folder. First, we have to go to that existing path. After that, we have to create on this. So I have created this puja. Okay. Now let's see how to move this my folders thing to shared folders. Now in my folders, I have when this is my folders and puja. And I want to copy both data, uh, data model and report because both should be there. Otherwise, my report will not run. So I will click on this more option. I will copy this. I will come on shared folders. Uh, my path was custom and inside that. I have kept it as Puja. Yeah, you can see Puja. So I will just expand this. First, I need to come inside this path and then automatically I will just come over here and you can see the paste option now because I've already copied so that paste option come up. So I will just click on paste and this data model came. Now, again, I will go to my path, this local folder. I will click on report more option. I will go for copy. Again, I will come. Expand it. And I will paste this. So once suppose in my folder it was in some different path, right? It was in my folder. It was inside Puja. Then inside there was a data model and report. Now when we are moving into the shared folders one, our path get changed. It is shared folder. It is custom. It is then Puja. So what it happens? Our report link get disconnected. So after doing this uh, path, after putting the our uh, data model and report, we we'll just go for edit on the report option. Go for edit. And just nothing we have to do. We have to actually let it come. You can see this search button auto. You can see you can you can tell that already it is existing. It will exit, but that link gets uh, disconnected. Just go for search option again and just go for now, not for my folders. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, please. We can hear oh, sorry, you. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, so shared folders, and I will go for again. Suppose now the path which we are uh, kept. It. So we'll go for custom. Just double click over here. Okay, single click doesn't works. Yeah. So my path. And I will just select once again the data model. And I will click on OK. And 
and got saved automatically auto save and then you can view your report so this is the from your own user means one user you are moving your report from local to shared folders and now the archive one when we move from one instance to another instance that is suppose this is the same thing this is my custom one so i will just do click on more i will click on archive option i will keep this enable because i want the owner name and the timestamp whichever it is there and all this report which particular data model is having those permission should be same so i will just enable this too i will click on okay and you can see xdm dot catalog file got downloaded. Same thing will go for report also. We'll click on archive option. I will keep this to enable. I will click on OK. Can I so archive is, folder? Yeah, sure. We, we can also do that. Because we have done this in two steps. So if we archive entire folder, that will yeah, be a short. Yeah, do that. Suppose this is Pooja, this is the folder. I will go for more. I will click on archive. Because uh, sometimes what happens now, I we have kept this particular data model report in one folder. But sometimes in a real scenario, sometimes what happens in uh, suppose custom folder, we are having one part financial. So inside that, they are having one folder as data model. So inside the data model, they keep all the data model and outside they keep all the reports. So at that time, we have to do this single, which I've shown you before. Go for data model, archive it, and then come to report path, and then do it archive. Or if your report and data model is in one folder, you can go for this folder archive also. And after that, suppose an archive. So for an archive, what we have to do? So we, we got this downloaded files, right? We got this downloaded file and suppose we came to some another different instance. So uh, in that instance, we just need to go to our exact path. Suppose we came to this instance and I'm, I want this particular the new report which I want to unarchive should be in this following path. So first I will come to this particular path and then I will click on unarchive. I will browse. Suppose uh, I want to keep my folder only. Uh -huh. I will just choose that folder catalog because I know what from that folder I am having data model and report both. I will choose it. I will nothing. I will not do anything else. I will not click on anything replace. I will not click on this also. OK, I don't want to replace any file or something. If you want to replace it, you can go for force or otherwise no. Uh -huh. ACL, if you want to create anything on archive new, because I don't want to change anything, I want to exactly the same thing, I want to put it in my another instance, so I will not do anything. I will click on OK. So on archive request is completed. So you can see automatically this folder also came to my path. So this is the way which move our report from one instance to another instance. So if path is same in both the instances, then we no need to relink that uh, what you did when we move from uh, my folder to shared folder. Right there no. we relinked, right? Correct, correct. If, if you are having in the same path, no path changes, then it will work fine. Uh, sometimes it Otherwise doesn't also, but relink. more or less it works fine. Yeah. We have okay. to relink it. Because it, yeah, okay. So we got how to create a data model template one. I so you, one. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I have one question like, uh, see, uh, so we created the report. Now, now what we are doing in EBS is after we created the report, we have to provide that report to the user to access, correct? Correct. So how we are doing this uh, in e here? 
so basically as i have said this because suppose i am one different user you are a different user but suppose both we are using the uat suppose in uat you want to see that uh, you see this report so that link for the uat for particular it will be a same and shared folder is a global one so if you keep something in custom that particular user can also see what you can just do you can just give him a path so how you can provide him a path that is go to properties and you can see this path so just copy this location and just provide to that particular person and he will he or she will come to this link and he knows the path shared folder it will be visible for that person also and he can go to there and he can run that report okay okay uh, but uh, you will see uh, if you come to if, uh, ebs it he, there the user has to just log into the responsibility and run the request and see the report but uh, here i don't you think it is becoming little complicated for the user uh, puja he is asking about how we convert it to this report to ess job okay how we can schedule it okay yes huh. Another thing before going to that, Abhishek, just for everyone's reference, Pooja, if you click on more and mm -hmm. click on more, we have an option of permissions. So sometime client asks that this report should be visible to only this particular group. So we have this option of permission where we can set the permission according to a particular role. If this these set of people have these role, then only they will be able to execute this report. Or if we can give only through Uh, direct person name so we have this permission control as well enabled on this this is one of the controlling factor another one which you were asking is we can convert this entire report to my ess job so uh, can you show that puja today or you need some time to show it in next session no i can show it now sure okay so this screen that popped up is you can see yeah. if someone yeah. is having ai admin role uh, permission is full control just click on this full control permission drop down yeah this will be only read only image yeah. modify this these type of permissions associated so okay just click on cancel and please please proceed for that ess yeah. part and also this three roles sometimes what happens if you go for an instance and you click on create you cannot see the data model option sometimes this happens okay so at that time you have to tell your db team to provide this role to your user so otherwise you cannot see that data model option we need a roles for this okay so i'll click on cancel okay for schedule uh, job so as this is a custom report so we have to create our own ess job and what i have talked about the standard report already for standard report oracle has already given us an ess job but for customized report we have to create our own ess job so let me just go to this instance so uh, one question uh, like uh, see uh, for when it comes to fusion uh we i had a uh, uh, this one uh, idea that uh, fusion is going to be much user friendly for the user and the, when it comes to report in the home page we are going to just give him some uh, link know, link, link that where, which he will click your reports no, and he can see correct. the report but this is complicating the matter no. for not complicating this is not complicating this is the way she is telling you initially so when you enter into next uh, week session you will see that if we execute some report it's uh, available there itself so uh, let her complete this point and uh, let's keep this point in mind and we will discuss on this so that this session should not stretch from or should not deviate from this point okay. let's let puja continue i got your point it's still user friendly whatever you are saying is correct but how to do that that we will come to know later on this is more of the technical thing which she is showing that you or any technical guy who want to create a report how they will do and how that will be done the question that you asked is from the user ui point of view so we will take it ahead so now let's complete this part let's her create a ess job is it fine Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. ESS job means what, Prasha? A report run. Report run through a menu or through a responsibility yes. or through a through, place through where report, we wanted to run through, the report. Right. Uh, run run report as we have in EBS. So in run report we used to search my report name from the LOV and then select and run. 
so that Correct. report how we register a report to run in front end so this is the ESA job creation means oh, you are okay. it is nothing but it's a registration of report right. yes yeah got it so we'll go come to setup and maintenance go for search global search we'll go for manage enterprise So you can see manage enterprise scheduler job definition and job set for financial supply chain and related application. We'll click on this. From name, you would be correlating that single job and job set that we use to register in EBS. It's similarly we are doing mm -hmm. here in Fusion. OK. And we can schedule a job for those report only which will be there in the shared folders, means the custom one. If we keep our any report in local folder and we want to schedule that, we cannot do that. So this all you can see the existing one, how this reports. So if we want to go for. I think Pooja, let's keep this topic for huh? next. Okay. Let's keep this topic for next session. Um, just uh, for as of now, just click on home page and go to procurement response procurement menu and we will see on the taskbar. Yeah, click on purchase order. Maybe I think uh, because of a short of the time, we could not see uh, changing in the existing report also. Because we will see that uh, next week. Maybe. Don't don't click here. Just scroll down. This there are uh, menus or uh, this report some bars. Just hover your mouse over this on the right side. Fourth icon in the task. Okay. Okay. Yes. So. See Abhishek for you. This is the reports and analytics links for user End user. He just came to procurement dashboard. Just click here, Pooja. Yeah. So once they click, they can see this my folder shared report. Click. Click here. And then anything lease supplies PO detail negotiation detail supplier orders so these are the analytics that this user can access so this is just click on anyone supplier orders this will open a dashboard don't edit i just want to execute this view mm. So oh. Abhishek got that idea that how user friendly thing is from the navigation navigation point of view for reports. Yes, yes, this is what I actually wanted to see. Uh, so jobs may jobs may not be mandatory for a, running a report, right, Prashan? Uh, there are different types of report that you are registering. This is something that we registered as analytics, which is coming here. And now Pooja, go to that uh, schedule jobs. Schedule jobs. Yeah, from Let me net, duplicate. Net no, no, don't duplicate. Go to the okay. net. Don't duplicate. Yeah. Go to that uh, schedule jobs. So this is the link we use to execute our ESS jobs. So in our next session, once we will be able to 
register it as a scheduled job then we will see this our that particular job will appear here okay. this is like running a report as we used to do in our abs so basically there uh, to access a report i we can simply ex uh, click view also we can execute it as a job and see is it uh for today i will say yes but uh, next session you will have better understanding on this yes Okay, okay. Okay, so that's all from this session. Uh, let's keep it for one hour, one hour only, not to extend this. Otherwise, things will get bound. So we can conclude. You can ask your questions yeah. if you have any related to today's session. Otherwise, we are good to close. See, I think uh, you know moving. Uh, from uh, share folder, local folder to share folder, one instance to another instance. Uh, in my view, that has made them a little complex from a Oracle and, and everything is menu driven now. That's the reason. Otherwise, from uh, in EBS, uh, we used to keep this file uh, and then we used to keep moving this file from a backend. OK, so that's why. Uh -huh. It was uh, easy. Uh, just just uh, think from the point of view, what you are talking about, it's a RDF. But when I talk about something, when we go for the XML report, we used to do similar aspects. Same things we used to do. We need to create our uh, other thing that you are saying, uh, download and upload. We used to create that uh, LDT file, something we used to call that LDT files, and then we upload that LDT yes. files. For, so similarly, actually, from archive. Yeah. archive. Yeah, and actually problem here is what I feel is that since we don't have a application server access, right? There we have server access. Here we don't have server access. What you want to do with that server access? You have that folder access. You are putting your files there. It's as good yeah, as... Yeah, that, that is what, yes, that is what I'm saying. Is there we, we used to connect with Putty and uh, WinSAP and we were migrating our RDF directly in the server, right? Here we don't have to do that. We can just download the archive one and it, that will come in our local machine and again we can upload in different instance. So it's, it's like now no need of yeah. It is it is a more secured connection now. 